All right, everybody, it is getting to be warm here in New England, so we're gonna tune up the fly rod for the spring fishing season. I kind of fly fish throughout the winter, but I basically take uh, about a couple months off to go ice fishing. Uh, so this is this is the G Loomis GL3 rod, uh, and this doesn't really matter what rod you, you wanna clean or use, anything you wanna use. Now, uh, I do wanna disclaim that bamboo is a little bit different, if you have a, your, a manual for your bamboo rod or if it's a newer rod, look up how to maintain that. I'm not gonna do that today. That's definitely different. Um, and we're gonna do an Orvis bat and kill with the, uh, the drag in it. And you've seen, the, this is another video that I made. I'll put a link in the description below for that video, on, just a review on this. I haven't really reviewed the rod. So we're gonna basically tune this up and I'm gonna walk you through step by step on how to do that because it's warming up here, the ice is going away and it's time to do these spring fly fishing rod and reel tune-ups. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the reel and I'm just gonna take it off just cause it's easier and I'm gonna pull that leader off. So if you're cheap like me, you can save your leader for this year, uh, especially if it's fluorocarbon. If it's not fluorocarbon, it's mono, um, just, just throw it away. Spend, spend the extra five, 10 bucks whatever you gotta do and throw it away. So I'm just gonna throw this one away cause I know it's mono and it's not worth losing a fish over for like a $5 liter. I'm gonna make my own liter so I, I save the money there anyways, or in theory I do. So trash that, throw that away appropriately. Uh, don't throw it on the river bank. For that, I'm just gonna throw it on the floor for now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start with, we're gonna actually start with the fly line itself first. So this is the Rio per Perception Weight Forward 4 weight line um, I have on here. So I'm gonna put it back on here just so I can, easy to use. So we're gonna wash this line first. So we're gonna check it for cracks first and we're gonna let it soak in wa soapy warm water for 10 minutes. And while we're doing that, we're gonna service the reel. So let me show you guys how to do that. So I have a bucket here uh, with soapy warm water uh, and the bucket, the bucket is just to show you guys so I don't have to bring you guys down to my sink and back and forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to strip this line off in big open loops and the goal is to not have a mess at the end of the video, right? So. We're gonna let that sit in there. And another thing you can do, so I have really tight coils, which means I don't really cast that far. While you're doing this, you can have somebody help you and you can grab the sections of it and basically just pull, you're not gonna break it. It's, the 30, it's like 30 pound breaking strength for these things. Uh, pull it and you can actually stretch out those sections um, as you're putting it in, not what I'm doing now, um, as you're putting it in. And that way, when you do go to shoot line in the spring, um, it won't be nice little, aggravating tight coils on your spool because they, they've they been having all that memory over the winter time. So uh, just for this purpose, I'm gonna throw it in there, but you guys should really stretch through each line. And what you can also do is go out on the lawn with a buddy, uh, stretch it first. Uh, you gotta have 90 feet though, or, or big sections of it. I've found that just stretching it like this is, is just as good. Uh, as long as you stretch over the last section that you're stretching, it's fine. So put that in your sink, get all the way to your backing. Just like that. And then we're gonna set that aside for 10 minutes. And that was, that was just a couple of drops of palm olive pure and clear. I try not to use like the crazy degreaser um, really strong stuff. This is biodegradable. This is the stuff that my wife buys. So I uh, don't really need that. So I'm gonna set that down on the floor and I'm actually gonna set this on the floor so I don't spill it while I'm servicing the reel, which is gonna be next. So there's, there's that. Now every reel is different. This is a sealed drag uh, reel. Click and pull reels are a little bit different. So now that I'm into backing, I'm not really worried about damaging that that much uh, for most things that I fish for uh, with a four weight. I'm not gonna get into my backing. So. I want to pop that apart and um, look at the manual for your reel. This is just a general um, reel maintenance 
So what I like to do is take kind of a Q-tip uh, with some rubbing alcohol on it and get rid of, rid of any of that old grease that's in there. So there's a, right now I probably have about a year and a half worth of old grease in there. And it's not really grease, it's, um, it's just lube, so, or just oil. So I'll show you guys the consistency. That's the consistency right there. You can use, this says to use pen, um, pen real lube. Uh, I don't have any of that. So I'm, I'm technically cheating and teaching you guys. Make sure you follow your manual and, uh, and look at the right oil to use. I'm sure um, all the expensive real companies have their own little special grease and stuff to use. So that's all nice and clean. That would look what I get out of there, all that black stuff. And that's just the bushing on the inside, so not super high tech. And then for this reel, uh, I've already taken the spanner wrench and actually loosened the, the drag on the, basically the plate on the outside. And we're gonna take that out, set that straight down, and we're gonna take this out and set it straight down so we don't mess up the, uh, the anti-reverse direction, that way my reel would actually spin backwards. So all we're gonna do is take the same uh, rubbing alcohol, and you can do this with a cloth as well, and we're just gonna clean those areas. And get them all nice and pretty. So ex especially the little where the C-clip sits in the front there, that gets all clogged up. And there's nothing worse than stripping a line off and your spool didn't click on all the way because there's too much gunk in there and your spool going back to the bottom of the lake. I've had that happen, it's not fun. So we want to get in there and make sure that's all clean. And I'm just using a rag to get into those finer corners there, into that little, into that little groove there. So you want to make sure that's nice and clean. Now this is not a tarpon fly reel uh, by any means. So if you are worried and nervous and you don't know how to service your tarpon reel, that's a size 12 or whatever, uh, have someone do it for you. Bring it to a, a shop so they can they can use the right tools. If you don't have your spanner wrench, you can really easily damage um, taking your reel apart. So what I'm not going to do is take any of that inside inside snap ring apart and any of that. Um, that's the seal drag. I'm going to keep the seal drag sealed, but I am just going to clean up any junk that I that I see in there. You know, what you don't want is you don't want basically oil getting into your seal drag because then your drag's definitely not going to work. And then we want to just, same thing with your um, anti-reverse bearing, isopropyl alcohol on there and clean out any of the junk and grit and uh, put it back together backwards. Your reel won't work the right way. So check it before you put it on your rod. Otherwise, you don't want to lose this little piece on the, on the end of the stream there. So clean that all off. So now we can put the reel back together and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take um, another Q-tip, which I like to use, some oil on that. Like I said, this is just light reel oil. And we're gonna get it on that part there, get that all up. There's a little O-ring on there. If that's cracked or broken, just replace that. Call up your uh, your Orvis dealer or whoever makes your reel and, and get a new O-ring that'll keep some of the keep most of the junk out. That all lubricated. Lubricate inside the bushing. And then you can put a couple drops in the couple drops in the anti-reverse thing. And then I flip this over so many times I don't know if it's in the right direction, so I'm just gonna plop it on there. Make sure it's keyed properly. Put my plate together so I have a little bit of corrosion there that I wasn't taking care of apparently. So we can uh, put a little real grease and you can put that right on that O-ring there. It's not gonna hurt it. And that's just gonna help prevent that seat. And when you buy a new reel, what you can do is just pop it open and take a look at where they're greasing 
Uh, some of the manuals go into finer detail, like say grease here with this much, with two drops, grease there with that much, with five drops. Um, most of these little small trout reels aren't going to be that fancy. Spin that back together. Tighten it with your spanner wrench if you have one. And that's it. And then check to make sure that any of your uh, your other areas of your fly reel are clean. So this is nice and anodized. Make sure you have any screws are missing. Make sure that your reel seat screws are nice and tight. Pop your reel back together. Try to pull the spool off. We're good there. Those screws are nice and tight. That's good. And I'm just doing this so I can uh, it's easier to handle the line like this. So I'm just going to take a rag. Don't don't use a paper towel. Paper is basically abrasive. So you want to use an old rag, old white t-shirt. Um, it's just a rag. I'll use another one real quick. And you just want to pinch that between your fingers and that's going to get all the grime and stuff off that line. And we're going to go through that the whole way. I'm not going to show you guys me. I'm not going to show you guys me untangling this because I'm pretty sure it's going to get tangled. But you want to leave that in large loops in the bucket, which it's not right now because this line hasn't been used for a while. You also want to inspect the first, probably the 40, 40 feet end of the line. That's where all the mass is in the line. So that's, that's the part of the line that matters the most for casting. So you want to check that for cracks. I've already checked it. Um, I would probably feel a couple of ticks and stuff like that if I was uh, while I'm reeling it in. And my line wasn't super dirty. Not really that much dirt on there at all, which is good. So we're going to take this down and we're going to be done with that. It is cleaning and getting the fly rod ready for spring. So we're going to set that aside. And so one thing I've learned is this is something that obviously gets dirty. You got your hand grease and fish slime all over your cork. Um, don't, so what I've heard is don't use any sealers on the cork. This cork's pretty beat up. Uh, just use soap and water. So I'm gonna still use the same soap and water that I used before. But what I'm gonna do first is since I've used um, this stuff, ferrule wax. You guys can see that on that camera. I've used that anywhere there's a connecting part on the, basically where the ferrules are. So I'm gonna clean that, all the, female parts first with the, the rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is not going to hurt any of this epoxy, any of the stuff on the rod. And like I said, if you're using doing, doing bamboo, that'll be a little bit different. But clean out all your ferrules with uh, a Q-tip. If you can, while you're doing this, check your uh, check to make sure there's no cracks in your epoxy, any real seats that are broken. I have one that's cracked here. I'm going to fix that later. Uh, Clean all your the female parts out. So there's a lot of wax on that one. So I'm going to clean that up. Is clean off the ends, the male ends of the rod uh, that also has that ferrule wax on it. So, and I'll I'll leave the link in the description below for this ferrule wax stuff. I just started using it and it works fantastic. My rod used to basically f fall apart because it's an older rod on the stream and I cast probably really too big of too big of flies for this rod. I, I, I go big um, when it comes to woolly buggers. I go heavy flies basically. Not big but heavy flies. So clean all that stuff off. Alright so we're done with that. Those are all clean. Cleaned all the ferrule wax off. I'm gonna get the same rag I used before. Put in on a little soapy water that I used before, and we're just going to clean the rod. Um, this is just general soap and water. We're also going to rinse this off. Make sure you guys do that, otherwise your rod's going to smell like flowers the whole time. And you'll be wondering what that smell is on the river. So we're good there. So I'm going to take a little bit of that ferro wax. And just a little bit. So I'm going to use just a little bit of it on my finger just like that and I'm going to put that on the male side of the ferrule for lack of a better term 
and we're just going to do a little bit of it just a little bit of on either side and that helps pieces go together and stay together and you got to remember it's on there because you wonder why black stuff gets all over the place um, but you don't need a lot it's just a little bit so put it on each each of the male parts and that's it and then you're basically ready for spring so i hope you guys in, liked and enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching make sure you guys subscribe and uh, if you guys have any tips or tricks for maintaining your fly gear during the leading up to the spring season uh, please drop them in the comments below thank you very much